Topic 1. Physical Quantities and Units The requirements in the AS syllabus is outlined on this page. Again, the requirements in the AS syllabus for this topic are outlined on this page. Please go through all the items here carefully. Also note, some of the items are labelled in bold, for instance, the amount of substance mole. This will be covered in the A2 part of the syllabus. And also this part here, the Avogadro constant will also be covered in the A2 part of the syllabus. What is a physical quantity? Anything that can be measured is referred to as a physical quantity. Okay, so we have uh, examples here like length, uh, weight, time, and force. These are known as physical quantities because they can be measured. So every physical quantity has a numerical value and a unit. Very important, yeah? Every physical quantity has a numerical value and a unit. So let's say we have the length of a piece of wire. So the length here is a physical quantity and it is 25.6 cm long. So this 25.6 is the numerical value and this cm, the centimeter, is the unit. Now, physical quantities uh, can be classified into two groups, base quantities and derived quantities. Let's talk about base quantities first. Again, physical quantities can be uh, divided into two groups, base quantities and derived quantities. Now, what are base quantities? Quantities that cannot be derived from other quantities. Again. Base quantities are quantities that cannot be derived from other quantities. Now, we will focus on five of these base quantities. One is length, two, mass, three, time, four, temperature, and five, electric current. Now, when you cover your A2, you will have another base quantity, which is the amount of substance, which we call the mole. More about that next time. Let's deal with uh, these quantities first yeah again base quantities that we are going to be focused on length the SI unit is meter M and for mass the SI unit is the kilogram kg for time the SI unit is second s and for temperature the SI unit is Kelvin K and for electric current the SI unit is ampere a so Again, base quantities in AS, we are going to focus on five of these, length, mass, time, temperature, and electric current. So let's deal with the symbols as well before we move on to derived quantities. For length, we will use the symbol L. Okay. For mass, we will use the symbol M. For time, we'll use the symbol T, a small t. And for temperature, we'll use T, the capital T. And for electric current, we will use I. Okay? And in A2, when we deal with amount of substance, uh, we will use N as the symbol. Okay? So again, L for length, M for mass, T for time, capital T for temperature, and I for electric current. Let's move to derived quantities. What are derived quantities? Derived quantities are quantities derived through the product or quotient of base quantities. Okay, product means A times B, uh, quotient means A over B. So let's deal with a very basic derived quantity, which is speed. Speed is distance over time. So you can see it is a, a quotient, distance over time. Distance is measured in meter, time is measured in seconds. So the units for speed will be meter per second. Now, 
Density, another derived quantity. The symbol that we use for density is rho. Okay, rho. And density is de de defined as, again, density is defined as mass over volume. Okay, mass, we know it is given in kilogram, the units. Volume is, okay, volume is length times breadth times height. Length is measured in meter. Breadth is also a measurement in length. So we have meter. H is also a measurement in length. We have meter. So we have meter times meter times meter, meter cube. So I have the units for density, kilogram per meter cube. Okay, this kilogram per meter cube, these are derived units. Let's look at a few more examples. Let's talk about acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over time. So the numerator here, the change in velocity is given in meter per second. Okay, and time here is in second. So meter per second divided by second, you will get meter per second squared. Force, another important quantity that we will be dealing with. Force is mass times acceleration. Yeah, let's write it in the way that we're going to learn it. F equals to ma. Mass is in kilogram. Uh, acceleration is in kil. Excuse me. Acceleration is in meter per second squared. Therefore, the units for mass in base units will be kilogram meter per second squared. And we have a name for that, one kilogram per meter, excuse me, one kilogram meter per second squared is one newton. Again, force is mass times acceleration. The units that we derive in base units will be kilogram meter per second squared. And we have a name for this unit, one kilogram meter per second squared is one newton. Then let's define work. Work is equal to force times distance. So we know the units, the base units for force, kilogram meter per second squared. For distance, it is meter. Therefore, the base units for work will be kilogram meter squared per second squared. Again, the units for work in base units will be kilogram meter squared per second squared. We have a special name for this. One kilogram meter squared per second squared is one joule. Let's also deal with frequency. Frequency, we like to define it as, let me write it here, F equals to 1 over T, 1 over the period. The period here is measured in seconds, therefore we have 1 over second, therefore we will get frequency, the base units will be per second. And per second, we like to call it 1 hertz, okay? 1 per second will be 1 hertz. Let's finish up with power. Power is defined as the rate of doing work. So let me write it here, the rate of doing work, work done per second. So work, we know it is kilogram meter squared per second squared. Let me write it here, kilogram meter squared per second squared. And time is measured in second. So bring this second up, we will get kilogram meter squared per second cube. And one kilogram meter squared per second cube is one watt. Some quantities have no units. Examples will be things like refractive index, relative density. They don't have units because they involve ratios in their definitions in which the units will cancel. Example, refractive index is defined as C over V. What is C? C is the speed of light in vacuum and V is the speed of light in the medium concerned. So again, refractive index equals C over V, and the numerator is given in meter per second, and the denominator is given in meter per second, so they will cancel. That's what we mean by the units cancel. Therefore, refractive index has no units. Good. Let's move to prefixes or prefixes. Now, we have got 10 prefixes here that you need to know. We start with Terra, the symbol is a capital T. And then we go to Giga, a capital G, the symbol. Mega is a capital M. And then we have Kilo, which is K. Deci, D. Centi is C. Uh, milli is M. A micro is Mu. 
and then nano is n and pico is p so you need to know all the prefixes here and all the symbols now what are they prefixes denote multiples or sub multiples basically what prefixes do is they cater for very large and very small values okay so the multiplying factors also you need to know for terra it'll be times 10 to the power of 12. the multiplying factor for giga will be times 10 to the power of 9 and then for mega will be times 10 to the power of 6 all the way up to pico we have times 10 to the power of minus 12. so you need to memorize all of this okay the symbols and the multiplying factors good let's look at some examples we asked to convert uh, 10.8 meters squared into cm squared so the working is here 10.8 meters squared you want to change the meter to a centimeter and we know that one meter is 10 to the power of two centimeter okay so replace the meter with 10 to the power of 2 cm and then this squared here is what you see here now so we are using indices 10.8 times 10 squared and you have a squared here so it's 2 times 2 is 4 so you'll get 10.8 times 10 to the power of 4 cm squared okay again meter i'm going to change it to centimeter so i have to multiply by 10 to the power of 2 cm so I replace this meter here with a 10 to the power of 2 cm and then put that in brackets with a 2 outside which is from here. So we have learned this before, x squared, if I have cube here, this becomes x to the power of 6 using indices. So I have this is 10 squared and the squared here it becomes 10 to the power of 4 cm squared. So if you clean this up, you will get 108000 cm squared and then if you want to write it in scientific notation. We want to write in scientific notation. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll place the 1.08 times 10 to the power of 5 cm squared. Okay? Good. Next, let's move to. Uh, we asked to express 586 microsecond in seconds. So 586 microsecond, we will replace this micro with a 10 to the power of minus 6. Again, we will replace this micro here with 10 to the power of minus 6. So we will get 586. Let me write it here. We will get 586 times 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds. Now 586, we ought to write it in standard notation or scientific notation rather. Again, we want to write 586 in scientific notation. So I can write 5.86. Again, 5.86 times 10 squared times 10 to the power of minus 6. So I have 2 and minus 6, it becomes minus 4. So I will get 5.86 times 10 to the power of minus 4 seconds. Good. Next example. I want to express 1 kilometer cube in meter cube. So this kilometer, we know 1 kilometer is 1 thousand meters again one kilometer is 10 to the power of three meters so replace this kilometer with 10 to the power of three meter don't forget there's a three here that's what you see here okay using the idea in indices i have 10 cube raised to the power of three will be 10 to the power of nine that's what you see here and then i have a meter cube and this is my final answer one times 10 to the power of nine meter cube one more example, we are asked to express 1 gram per cm cube in SI units. So 1 gram per cm cube, I have 1 gram divided by 1 cm cube. That's what it means, 1 gram per cm cube. So the gram, I'm going to change it to kilogram. So I have to multiply by 10 to the power of minus 3 kg. That's what you see here. Cm cube, I'm going to change it to meter cube. So I have 10 to the power of minus 2 meter and cube again cm cube i want to change it to meter cube so the cm i will replace with a meter which is 
C remember is 10 to the power of minus 2. So 10 to the power of minus 2 meter and a 3 outside. So I have 10 to the power of minus 6 meter cube. Okay. That's what you see here. So I have 10 to the power of minus 3 over 10 to the power of minus 6 kilogram per meter cube. So 10 to the power of minus 3 over 10 to the power of minus 6 will be 10 to the power of 3. So I have 1 gram per cm cube will be equals to 10 to the power of 3 kilogram per meter cube, which is 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Next question, we are looking at June 14, paper 2-2, question number 1. We are asked to show that the SI base units of power are kilogram meter squared per second cube. So power is work done over time. Okay. Work done is force times distance over time. Force, what are the base units? Kilogram meter per second squared. And distance is measured in meter over second. So when you clean this up, you will have kilogram meter squared per second cube. Done. Okay, the SI base units for power. Part B, the rate of flow of thermal energy, Q over T, in a material is given by this formula. They gave you A is the cross-sectional area, uh, T is the temperature difference uh, across the thickness of the material, X is the thickness of the material, and C is the constant. And they ask you to determine the SI base units of C. So let's write C as equals to Q over T times X over a t okay just rewriting this equation they've given us with c as a subject so q over t times x over a times t now q over t is the rate of flow of energy so rate of flow of energy is just, the units will be the same as power units so let's write it down it will be kilogram meter squared per second cube and then i have x which is uh, thickness which will be meter divided by A, which is uh, cross-sectional area, meter squared, T, which will be temperature, it will be Kelvin. So now all you need to do is clean this up. I have meter squared here and meter here is meter cube. Meter cube divided by meter squared. Okay, I'll just have one meter left. The kilogram is still there. And my S to the power of negative 3 is still there. And my K becomes K to the power of negative 1. Here you have it. Okay, kilogram uh, meter per second cube per Kelvin and we are done.